Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio and today we're going to take a look at the Army Painter War Paints and the new Speed Paints line. I just created a little bit of a rack just to kind of uh, keep them organized. Obviously with anything to do with our hobby, whether it's models, supplies, paints, etc. It's important that they are organized, easy to find and access when necessary, and they don't take up an uh, unnecessary amount of room on your tabletop or get in the way of your work area. So if you are new to the hobby, make sure to like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and War Card content as well. So I basically just figured out exactly how many paints we have in the Army Painter set and then also the Speed Paint set as well. These are the only Army Painter paints I have and I have not actually tried any of them in the past. But I knew that uh, if I was going to use these, if I was going to you know, add these to my repertoire, so to speak, that I was going to need to have some kind of rack for them so that they would be easily accessible, easily viewable, and uh, you know, it wouldn't take up unnecessary space on my uh, work area. So uh, here I went ahead and printed off some uh, 3D print like paint racks essentially uh, that will fit the army painter paints and Vallejo. It was a free design that I found on Thingiverse. Took uh, basically no filament. I went ahead and printed four of them, each one holding 20 paints. And then for the army painter uh, war paints section, uh, that's going to basically take up, it's 50 paints came in that starter set. And then in the speed paint set came 23 more paints. I actually bought two duplicates for the uh, like washes, the dark tone and the strong tone. Uh, just because I go through quite a bit of them, especially for terrain sets. And then I actually filled out uh, the remainder of the original metallic line. Uh, there's a couple metallics that just doesn't come in the set. And I wanted to go ahead and pick those up as well. Uh, so when it's all said and done, I have one empty space to uh, fit in one more paint, uh, whichever one is necessary. But in the meantime, I basically have these all set up. So uh, let me show you what I did. I basically created this setup for free. Obviously, you would need a 3D printer if you were going to do something like this. And, uh, you know, a little bit of filament. But when it's all said and done, the amount of filament that these four racks took and then, uh, you know, the amount of time is basically nothing because I basically just tossed them on the SD card, load it up on the printer and then set it and forget it. So that's one thing I do love about 3D printing is uh, it's basically just another set of arms, hands, whatever working uh, while you are doing something else. So uh, let's just basically take a look at what we've got going on here. So just going to get a look of the back here. Uh, obviously you can see this is the box that the Mega Paint set came in. And then we have set on top of that box uh, basically our individual racks. So this is the racks. They fit the paints in perfectly. They have a little bit of like a ridge down in there that stops them from going all the way down and falling out. You can lift it up they don't fall out the bottom and uh, each one of these holds 20 paints holds them nicely uh, you know secures them pretty good when they do fall over they just kind of like lean to the side there so and then in order to basically store those racks i just created this little setup right here so obviously needed some kind of like you know tier system so that uh, each one of the racks would line up so i just went through some of my boxes uh, that i store books or whatever in some extras that i have around and I found one that was the perfect size. So uh, let me just kind of break this down and show you exactly how I did this. So this is the actual box from the Army Painter set. I basically just put the racks in here and saw that they would fit in here real nicely and that it was basically going to accomplish exactly what I needed. So I took the two halves of the box and I went ahead and cut them down. Um, in order to figure out how I needed to cut them, I basically just took the rack and just kind of put it right here and then just follow the diagonal line on the way up and then once i did that i was basically left with this little outside piece so then i needed to create the piece that i see here to uh stack everything up so after i created that initial piece i basically just needed something to give it a little bit of height so all i did was took the lid of the box cut off a piece that i needed here that would be the right height to set them up on the level and then just put that right in there and then this fits perfectly inside of this right here drops back in there and then again i just trim the sides so it would fit correctly i did have to cut some small ridges in the heavy cardboard because while it fit perfectly inside of the army painter box uh, it was running into a little bit of a problem uh, with just uh, squeezing down where i wanted them to be so and then once we're ready to put it in here you'll see that the little ridges line up with the parts that stick out the most on the sides there and once we've got everything set up they fit down in there nice and snug uh, doesn't want to go anywhere and then obviously we have the back piece right here uh, which is spaced out to fit the other racks behind it so we basically just set them in there and then they just fit right in 
uh, in like the little ridges. And there is just a little bit of extra room in the back there. Uh, you could easily do something with that. I haven't decided if I'm going to put like some brush holders back there or just a spacer. Uh, obviously, you know, there's not a bunch of like crazy stuff going on on my desk. So I don't have to worry about, you know, if there's a little clearance that's fitting in here like super tight or anything like that. But uh, overall, that was it. Super simple and basically a free stand for all of my Army Painter paints. Uh, so now I can keep them easily accessible and uh, where they need to be so that when it's time to use them, uh, they're all right there. I can see the colors very easily and access them. I don't have to worry about shifting them around or picking up like 20 bottles to try to find the right one, uh, etc. I've also seen a lot of people will take their paint, open it up, and just put a dab of paint on the top of each one of their caps. Uh, so that it's easy to see exactly what color it is. Uh, I find with like the uh, kind of like bleacher system that I can see pretty clearly uh, where everything is at. So, um, so on the top here, we've got our 40 paints and then we have black down here. You can see the paint caps are color coded also, which is super cool uh, or like uh, type coded, I should say. So all the white ones are basically the regular army painter war paints. And then we have the reds are the shades and then the blacks are the metallics and then the silvers are all of the speed paints and then here we have the medium as well so uh, definitely looking forward to using these been really excited and it has been hard to hold back uh, obviously have to prioritize things so been working on quite a few commissions uh, finish up a terrain commission and i have a sisters of battle expansion commission coming out of the studio in the next couple days as well so make sure you check out those videos and then also before I wanted to actually dive in and start using these, had to create a nice way to store them and uh, keep them accessible on my table and not take up a ton of room or be having to like dig through boxes to find the right paints, etc. So, uh, you know, before I actually like jump in, I uh, make sure that everything is set up so that I can be the most efficient and effective uh, with my tools, with my resources, etc. So. Uh, you know, obviously, if you wanted to create something like this and you don't have a 3D printer, you could do something pretty similar overall and create kind of a tier system like this. Uh, it's going to be a little more difficult, a little more work, uh, but could be done with just boxes, cutting different levels, etc. If you do have a 3D printer, there are tons and tons of these various paint racks uh, that will hold different amounts of paints in them, uh, different styles. They have ones with brush holders, etc. Um, you know basically available for free a lot of people have done the work created these things and then share them so highly recommend you check that out if you do have a 3d printer when i first got into 3d printing i wasn't sure exactly what i was going to be printing with them uh, it was an easy decision to make because it was relatively cheap and then obviously you know you can print unlimited things the filament is very cheap also but i honestly didn't know how much like useful stuff i was going to print or if i was just going to print a bunch of random stuff and the truth is i have printed a ton and ton and ton of things worth exponentially more in value than I have spent on the 3D printers. So I have a few 3D printers. Sometimes they are running over time, 100% of the time, all of them going. Other times I'm just using one here and there, etc. Uh, but the truth is there's an unlimited amount of things to print. Uh, but if you thought that you had a pile of shame from miniatures, uh, wait till you get a 3D printer because the piles will grow exponentially. Uh, so that's it. Just wanted to basically show off the little setup I have here. Now that everything is prepared, now that it is neat and clean and concise, I have a couple of free paint racks that hold everything, keep it organized. Now I'm ready to actually dive in and use the Army Painter line and uh, give you guys my full and honest review. I also went ahead and took the time. Obviously, the speed paints come with the little metallic uh, Army Painter mixing balls in them. I went through and opened up all the regular paints as well and put mixing balls inside of them also. Uh, the mixing balls are crucial uh, prior to ever using army painters paints at all uh, you know which is right up to the state because i still haven't used them uh, i had only ever used their bottles for transferring like citadel paints into the dropper bottles and then also their mixing balls and you know to tell you the truth they're both great quality and work but you know it's not the same as paints and all their other supplies so uh, really excited to actually dive in and uh, you know actually experience give these things a fair try and uh, see how they do so uh, that's it for today just wanted to do a quick little update uh, you know basically just showing off the little rack that I made and uh, just kind of talking about how important it is to organize your hobby space uh, the truth is you know in the past I have not always been the most organized person and uh, I'm sure like anyone knows you know a lot of times you'll go to do something use something find something and you can't find it you end up digging around you're opening up drawers you're looking all over the place for where you lot like last left something and then finally by the time you find it you might have eaten up 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour searching for it, reorganizing stuff, etc. 
And then by the time it's all said and done, you know, you don't actually get any hobbying done. So for me, it's very, very important to keep everything clean, to keep your hobby area, uh, you know, plenty of room and to not stack stuff up all over the place, not have things hard to reach or hard to find. Uh, because when you can just sit down and get ready to hobby and you don't have a bunch of prep work leading up to it, you get so much more stuff done. If every time you sit down at your desk, you have to spend an extra 10 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour messing around with stuff, by the time it's all said and done, you're not going to get nearly as much stuff done over a long period of time. So, uh, but you guys probably already knew that. I just wanted to, uh, you know, share my cool little 3D printed set. Uh, check out Thingiverse, tons of cool stuff on there. Check out Army Painter, and uh, I will give you guys my honest review in the very near future of their war paints and also, of course, their speed paints as well. Uh, but that is it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man. If you enjoy this type of content, mini, you know, miniatures and war gaming, all that good stuff, uh, you know, Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, D&D, pretty much anything to do with tabletop gaming, uh, you know, definitely the spot for that. So make sure that you like and subscribe, share with your friends, leave me a comment down below, and I'll be glad to, uh, you know, interact with you guys and share any questions or comments, etc., uh, you know, that uh, you guys have. So that's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.